everyone, welcome to The Common Product. I'm Paul Adams and with me today, as always, is Des. Hey, Paul. Hey. How's it going? Good. All right, so today we have a great topic. Uh, we're going to talk about AI and product strategy. We're going to talk about what that means for people. Uh, people are in a range of different positions on this. We've seen what's possible from this kind of first uh, wave of companies. And like any big technology, whether it's cloud or mobile, now it's AI. It's unclear to people at the start how it's all going to pan out and so on. I think when you look at the landscape today, we have people who are all in, they're like bet the farm, bet the company, and then you've got people who are still a little unsure. Is this really a big deal? Is this just more Kool-Aid, Silicon Valley Kool-Aid? So that's like a wide range, Des, where do you think you're on it? I am definitely in uh, bet the farm, bet the company, get bet the Kool-Aid, um, go to your neighbours, bet their farms. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I think it's huge. I think it's like I, I understand the, the cause for skepticism because it does seem to have conveniently arrived at a time when at the very least Silicon Valley and investors were like skagging for something new to talk about. Whenever you have the experiences like that, some of the AI stuff is delivering at the moment, it's quite clear that something massive is happening and that it's like um, we're still in the sort of embryonic stage of seeing it. Like you mentioned, the dust has settled. It is really like the first wave of dust. Like we've we're starting to now see uh, like whole companies that get like a series A or a series B off the back of you know being an AI native applied company like I, I when I talk about this what I mean is like not like say open AI or anthropic who are like providing the actual AI but I mean like people who are building whole like workflow products that are entirely powered by AI as in if open AI and anthropic and all that didn't exist this company also wouldn't exist right yeah. so it's like people really leaning on it as a platform I think when you look at some of the capabilities that are there it's a straight line certainty for me that like the whole industries, whole categories of software will be upended. Yeah. Sometimes in tech we could talk about like extinction events. Mm -hmm. You know, like um, mobile came along and yeah. mobile first companies killed companies who weren't mobile first and yeah. couldn't adapt prior to that cloud, same cloud yeah. first yeah. companies. Yeah. Like you mentioned we've AI first companies. Yeah, yeah. Do you think this is like an extinction event type thing? I think in certain pockets, uh, certainly. And so a lot of other pockets I think if it's not an extinction event, it's because of it, one new dynamic, which might be that uh, because of a lot of the power actually sits on, let's just say, an open AI server, right? The power is kind of on tap through access to through an API. Like, mm -hmm. hey, summarize this 5,000 word uh, incident for me. And you ping that over to a third party and you get back the response. That is not the same thing as rebuilding your entire company to make it iOS native. Yep. So as a result, it, it there will be areas of software where I think the incumbents actually make use of this and get a lot of the value. So I think some areas will be extinction events, but I don't think it's a it's a wide, it's not like an asteroid, or at least maybe it's a small asteroid or a small asteroid shower in certain areas, but it's not going to take out the whole industry. I think you're going to see a lot of the big companies actually just get bigger. Yeah, which obviously happened with other, with other um, yeah, yeah. Like mobile too. Yeah. Like Google, Facebook eventually did figure out how to, how to do it. They did, yeah, that's right. Yeah, That's an interesting point. Like They figured out to do it quicker than anyone could figure out uh, like kill them. how to be great at say search like and, and we'll come back to this idea of a ratio in a second but learning objective c and deploying uh, a objective c powered or whatever uh, ios powered sort of interface on a mobile phone to an insanely powerful search engine uh it turns out the hard bit of all that is the insanely powerful search engine yeah, yeah, yeah. not the you know and like so but if that ratio is important of like how much new work do we have to do and how much of the incumbents work is still valid yeah effectively google's back end is still today extremely valid and the front end might change and now we're seeing barred instead of the old sort mm -hmm. of search box or whatever but like the you know turns out crawling the entire internet is not something that like two randos falling out of yc can do in an evening you know? yeah 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 well, let's, let's talk about both sides of that so yeah. there's like all the kind of we, we sometimes we call these like um table stake features but yeah. it's like the core features a product needs in a, in a certain category mm -hmm. there's like new things yeah. you know, new things it can do new technologies enable yeah. new things Let's start with like the new things that AI can do. Yeah, right? yeah. So like you have a whole yeah. list of things that make you bullish on it. Yeah, that's true. Um, like if we go back to say November 29th, when we saw ChatGPT 3.5 or Turbo or whatever, uh, I can't remember the various namings, but um, what became obvious, or at least the first thing we'd seen from that was like, wow, this thing is, an, is very, very good at being conversational. It's very, very good at understanding humans and very, very good at replying back to them really well. It takes prompting really well. It takes instruction really well. It was very good at what you say, just basic text wrangling. So expand upon this, summarize that, rephrase this, retone that. It was also very, very good at, uh, at like 
deduction or inference so you mm-hmm. can give it a complex scenario and ask it like you know like if you say like i don't know um somebody is struggling with a long-term il- illness inside a bu- burning building which is the bigger issue here and like it'll like it'll work out answers to those questions like which you know it, you know to humans these things sound insanely uh, simple but like uh, to get a machine to actually understand that uh, is like is and, and make it an inference and then suggest an action is quite powerful or like you know given the state of this project based on all the like the updates you've read what do you think the most important issue is yeah. and it'll actually do a really good job of that so the idea of like you know deductive or inductive reasoning is, is like pretty uh, powerful there as well and that's all so far we're just talking about like the text domain the other stuff that we've seen we saw some of this slightly prior, uh, which was the like say Dolly and Dolly Two yeah. uh, were both prior to that. The ability to give in a piece of text, render an image, and that's getting insanely good right now. The latest mm-hmm. Mid Journey stuff is just breathtaking. People often ask like, why is that useful? Well, like there are loads of scenarios where people aren't creative, but they know what they want. So like, mm-hmm. I'd like to send this email, and I'd like it to be sent, and I'd like it to be a light thin font on a dark textured background. Yeah, and. It can give you 27 versions of that on the screen. You can be like this one, but I want it to be more rich or more high end or more luxurious. So all of a sudden, people who can't do art can do art, right? Yeah. It's massive expansion to the accessible market of, in this boring case, like fucking email creators or whatever, you know. But like being able to like generate imagery is like not to be sniffed at. I think a lot of these things get like um, like typified by the funny use case. Like show me a, a cheeseburger eating a planet. And like it does a really good job of that, but people are like, well, I never wanted that. Yeah, that's fine. But I guarantee you, like, give me a really nice header background for my new website is going to be a cool feature in Squarespace or Wix or something like that. You know, so like, so that's imagery. We have voice. So uh, this has been coming along. Like, there's both the ability to parse voice. So like, you know, pretty much real time audio transcription, and it can generate voices as well. Uh, like the latest breakthroughs in AI. So if you look at say. Synthesia, or there's one called play.ht, but there's a lot of them like where you can literally, you can give it like Mission Impossible shit. Like you give it like 90 seconds of you speaking and it'll do a passing impression of you for like a single sentence. Yeah. Give it like an hour of you speaking and it starts to get, you can trick it or you can force it to make it clear it's definitely not Paul, but you could certainly get away with it. So generating voice, then generating video. So again, Synthesia does this like a fake video avatar thing where like you can like record you and some mannerisms of you and it'll be able to like basically make it look like you're talking. Um, but we're going to be able to generate full-on video in the same way we can generate full-on uh, like uh, imagery. I, I think the mistake I was making initially, and a lot of folks make initially, is like they think, right, well, that's grand. Sounds really important. If I work in Adobe, I should be all over this. I think people don't realize how much this has a way to creep into your normal life. Like that voice tech can be literally the same thing that like would power the future of messaging or could power the future of product interaction where you just talk to your product while you're driving or whatever. Yep. All of that's now possible. And similarly, like I said, like the imagery isn't just like, you know, hot dogs eating planets or whatever. It can literally be like you design me an entire background, reskin this product that I'm using right now to look prettier. You know, all of that sort of stuff. I could keep going with like other cool stuff that's that's like now possible. But when I look at the sort of collective weight of all of that potential, and I think about its applications to like specific software domains, to, to creativity, obviously, to UI, to just how humans might interact with other humans, uh, what jobs can be automated, what, what parts of jobs can be automated. I think like you couldn't like pressure me into being an AI skeptic at this point. I'm just like, it's not possible. Like, yeah. You know, it'd be like trying to push back the tide. I just, it's pretty obvious to me, massive transformations coming and you're better off getting on the right side of them. Yeah. I mean, I'm there too. Um, and even in some of the things you said there, like imagery, for example, you know, the entire, the entire industry of advertising it would probably yeah. be turned upside down yeah, by this. Absolutely. Certainly if you work in any kind of creative agency or media yeah. agency, mm-hmm. um, I know people work, who work in creative agencies already using yeah. AI to generate all their work, yeah. you know, or most of their work. Let's talk about the other side of it. Yeah. So like even some of the, the startups you mentioned there, I haven't heard of before. Yeah. It's like, it's just an explosion, right? I think yeah. I don't think anyone could keep up with all the new types of things. Um, built on this new generation of technology. Meanwhile, you have like huge companies, hundreds of billions of dollars in revenue, who've built um, a business over a decade, two decades. And I think we in the early days of Intercom were a little bit naive. You know, we were kind of coming in like hot startup, like yeah. taking on the incumbent, yeah. uh, you know, giant killing yeah. type we're mindset. We're going to kill sales for us. Yeah, yeah like, yeah, yeah. you know, chip yeah. on your shoulder, yeah. Yeah. giant killer, right? Yeah. And then you realize, oh, you know, and, and areas like reporting and stuff, you're like, oh, this is a big, d- deep thing. Yeah, it, these <laughs> guys takes, are big for a reason. <laughs> yeah, years yeah. of years of yeah. product development required just mm-hmm. to have the table six, just to be there. How do you think companies think should think about that? I, I, so I think yeah, you can look at this from both sides, right? Like, uh, 
if you're like a scrappy startup uh, and you're picking a, a, an enemy like so if you say well let's go after workday uh what is the attack angle on workday that ai uh, permits well you look at all the capabilities uh that we have like you could try and generate performance reviews and try and parse that sort of stuff but ultimately when you you know let's say you find a few examples where you can sprinkle and dot in like bits of ai magic to simplify existing workflows i think anyone who's used workday would have to admit that i don't think anyone gives a shit about the complexity of the workflows inside that company that's not their like roi that's not the reason people buy workday and in fact the reason people buy workday is i think because it's the largest sort of like i guess eorp for humans that you could imagine and they have a massive enterprise sales team and they've built a huge brand that's all about like uh, we are like the final boss uh, when it comes to like HRIS systems and that's what they care about. And I think an incredible configurability. In like, exactly. Almost like, infinite yeah. configurability. Like Workday doesn't, I don't even think it assumes that these people are humans. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like you map things to things and one role is called this and one role is called that. So the question then becomes uh, if you were to rebuild all this in an era of AI, uh, what would change? And if people are buying extreme configurability, it's not obvious to me that the attack angle is going is basically there. Like, uh, I think people are really buying a glorified, uh, like, almost like WYSIWYG to a database where they can like connect thing to thing by manager relationship and say thing has report and thing has home address and thing mm -hmm. has salary, and uh, and all that you know how to say like uh, administrivia that has you hiring like full time work work day uh, like you know uh, people. I don't think any of that really like uh, changes massively in the near term. So I think you could you could have a far more beautiful workday uh, that's AI powered. I just don't think anyone would give a shit. Yeah. I think you'd be duking it out with other Series A or Series B startups who are probably still more mature than you, right? But to give you like maybe a sexier example, like if you and me say, hey, we're going to go kill Stripe and we're going to use AI. Okay, job one, uh, you start working the AI. I'm going to stick on a suit and go meet with seven banks and Visa and MasterCard to see <laughs> if I can get permission to go and charge credit cards. Yeah. You know, like that, like that is the actual task. So yeah. and And then how do I go and build a brand that people trust and all that sort of shit, right? And you realize that like, yeah, your AI might be amazing at fraud detection, even better than Stripe's AI for fraud detection. And your AI might be amazing at like detecting the right optimal pricing points for like the B2B SaaS companies or whatever. Like that's probably like 15% of the puzzle. And the other 85% of the puzzle is where I'm like, you know, 10 years behind Stripe chasing banks, seeing if they'll give mm -hmm. me a, like a, a, a merchant provider account too. If you're a startup, you have to really believe if you were to build this entire product category from the ground up today, given what's now possible as of this kind of AI revolution, you would do it substantially different. Mm -hmm. The definition of the word substantially, I guess, means that like uh, how much of the incumbent products technology is still relevant in the future. And if it's like a very, very small amount, like maybe their, their login system and shit like that's still relevant, yeah, there's blood in the water, get going. However, if it's like, um, if we take, say, MailChimp, let's go after MailChimp and we're going to use AI to write the emails and style the notes. That's cool. Most people like MailChimp because they have a really high deliverability rate and really good email uh, newsletter analytics and list management and subscription management and they have good spam detection and all that sort of shit. You probably have to build all that. Yep. And while you're building all that, let's say that's, that's, like, you know, that's like 30 months worth of work. MailChimp will probably work out how to build your, your, your little AI features somewhere along those 30 months and then you just have what they have but they have still a far more mature and well-known brand and the one big differentiator you were bringing to the party they have because mm -hmm. and it's especially true if the core engine of differentiation is actually on the other end of an open AI call an open AI API call because in that world I'm sure it'll work out the prompt too you know yeah uh, so like so that's the startup angle you really have to sort of say hey I think if this area was to be built again today, you'd do it fundamentally different. I'll give you like an example. There is a product or many products that like you connect it to all of your different advertising platforms and it kind of houses all of your sort of central advertising inventory and it runs analytics and it'll tell you things like, hey, our most effective ads are like the following and we're gonna produce, uh, we're gonna run A-B tests of this one against that one and you can go in and you can configure and tweak and re-upload new versions and all that sort of stuff and you can look at charts and dashboards and all the sort of shit you show your boss that says like, hey, I'm doing a great job here. Um, I think that entire product category would be built entirely different today. Yep. I think the idea would be you would ask the AI to generate the ads, you'd ask the AI to run the ads, you'd ask the AI to measure the LTV CAC of the ads, you'd ask the AI to suggest all of the different bake-offs and like A-B tests 
and to optimize the ads per channel per person. Mm -hmm. and I just think it would just run all that in the background. And when I think about a product like that, I actually don't even know what the interface is. I, you know, it could be like one of those like shell scripts that you just run and you never actually see what happens in the background. You just, you know, trust in the Lords that like the money is going to start coming in. You know, maybe, maybe like the AI also learns that in order to justify its own value, it spits out a PDF to you every now and then just to make you feel like you're doing your job, you know, yeah. uh, or help you get promoted or whatever. But like, I think that type of product category where it's like, um, create, optimize, explore, exploit, uh, uh, iterate, or whatever. I think all of those tasks are individually doable. And if you're sitting in one of these companies today going, oh shit, maybe that's is a point. The temptation is to say, well, let's just do one of them. But the reality is the actual future is gonna be doing all of them uh, and they'll all be like uh, knitted together. So there actually won't, like you'll convince yourself that like, hey, surely no one's gonna automate all this. But like, I think in a lot of these cases it actually can be done. When you see how good the, the re reasoning of say GPT-4 is, you're like, okay, it's not obvious to me why a human would want to log in here every day and eyeball a list and see the red flashing number and be like, let's turn that ad off. You know, uh, or like, uh, let's generate 10 versions of this bright green one because it seems like it's really good and we should see if we can optimize it. Like all of those decisions can be made by uh, AI. So I think like th that's an example where like there's probably a massive startup opportunity you yeah. know, th that is worth pursuing in some sense. Yeah, so like startups need to clearly understand the actual business they're trying to attack yeah. and understand what customers actually care about and yeah. value. Mm -hmm. is, is, is it like the kind of front end stuff, which is much easier for us to kind of see and recognize mm -hmm. and think about? Or is it actually like in Workday's case, the back end stuff or in yeah. Stripe's case, the regulation, or, you yeah, know, yeah. the lawyers and the chats yeah. and whatever. Yeah. So I think there's like good questions that, that, that you and I have talked about and I know you've thought a lot about that are very useful for bigger companies to think about whether or not they um, have an opportunity to be attacked, yeah. legitimately attacked by a startup. Before that though, I'd love to just talk a little bit, you touched on different categories there and I, I think I, I, we have a couple here that kind of we've been talking about. I think we should go through them real quick because they make concrete for me, yeah. and I'm sure for other people, how things might change. Yeah. And it's not a leap, it's not like a hop, skip and a jump, it's like, no, no, today. Yeah. So for example, like, um, people talk about, like you mentioned, like you know, multimedia type yeah. things, like imagery, vi video and voice yeah. and so on and so forth. There's a whole bunch of categories, sales yeah. tools, project management tools, reporting. Yeah. Like let's start with a, with a couple of those. Like for example, sales, yeah. you know, today lots of companies try to hire salespeople. Yeah. They spend a shit ton of money training them. Yeah. Like, how do you think that would change? Like, every aspect, I think, is susceptible to significant change. The training of salespeople uh, and their training tools, all of that, like, now can be training where the AI sits live in the gong call and provides, like, real-time updates on, like, hey, they asked about pricing, here's pricing. Hey, they asked about this, here's a slide. Hey, they asked about that, here's a video to play. Here's a customer to reference. Here's a testimonial. Like, so I think all of your training, it's going to be much more, like, in-ear versus after this call, Johnny, we're going to sit down and talk to you about all the things you should have said. Yeah. Right. It's much more in the moment, right? So that's just training. That's before we even get to your desk. Sales, like one, one role of sales will be in, say, prospecting, right? This idea of here's a list. We're going to go and go through this list, try and find the people who are credible, going to try and make contact with them, uh, reach out to them. We're going to try and ring them. We're going to try and email them. We're going to maybe like target ads against their specific email address. So hopefully we can follow them around the internet. Uh, I haven't said a single thing there that a human needs to do. Mm -hmm. Right. Look at this list. AI can do. Uh, lead score this list AI can do whether that's directly or by APIing over to like a zoom info and getting a lead score back whatever um, email these people AI can do uh, or call these people AI can do um, you know prioritize run ads against these people AI can do uh, you know target specific uh, testimonials use cases and PDFs and sales decks specific to this person in this industry AI can do so like th that's one example and like there are there are companies there's one called reggie.ai there's one called uh, nuke or nukes.ai that are that are just like really looking at real specific value points in the sort of sales workflow and saying, right, draw a line around this, we can do all of that. Yep. And, and like that's, by the way, that's awesome news for salespeople. Like it's like a lot of the undifferentiated heavy lifting will get taken away and everyone's path to being what they want it to be, which I presume is either like, you know, a senior sales leader or a senior like, you know, sales rep, like deal, dealing with higher deals at higher values. It's almost like we've taken away a lot of the like, um, the training courses mm -hmm. and sort of said, hey, turns out no one needs to do any of that shit anymore. So let, let, let's get you into the mixer straight away. Yeah. Yeah. I think for a lot of these things, it's, uh, well, two categories of things. One is for some people like sales, it's the same job selling, but AI will make the job much easier. And more fun. And more fun. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. And then the other category of, of thing is where people's jobs might change. So yeah. like project management is another category yeah. where probably people's jobs will change Yeah, because of AI. I think so. Project management is quite nuanced. Uh, I think this is the one area where you're seeing a lot of AI applied, and I think a lot of it's um, 
like what I call the like uh, the condiment style AI. It's like the salt and pepper. It's not the dish. It's just a little <laughs> bit of cute shit on top. I'm wary of the whole. Uh, write the first sentence of a, of a status update and press tab to expand, where it's like, I think this project is on course, tab. But the following risks remain, <laughs> you know, like, because I'm like, I'd rather that was actually coming out of your head than like GPT <laughs> inferring it, because uh, I need you to stand over it, because you putting your name against it actually tells me that you professionally think that and we pay you to understand these things. Yeah. You know, so um, I do worry a little bit that sometimes you might get overused in these areas. But to say, like, think about something like an Asana or a Jira or a Basecamp or whatever, and say, how could AI help? The, again, it comes back to this idea of, well, what are the things that happen here? Like, so uh, let me know what's going on in this project. I think AI can do that, right? Mm -hmm. AI can, you can sort of basically, basically ask GPT-4 to say, read all of the most recent threads, append that to your most recent knowledge, and see what are the semantic differences that an executive would care about to the status of this project and if it's still on course. Yep. And send me that every day as a Slack message. You know, that, that, that's like, you know, and again, the, the thread there is, you'll notice again, we're moving away from the UI to just being a, a, a push versus a pull, right? Yep. Rather than logging in every day, you're just gonna be told shit's ever gone wrong. Mm -hmm. Find the root cause of all these issues. Why is this project running late? You know, maybe other stuff like, uh, who has contributed like the most to this project in terms of making concrete decisions? What decisions have been made too soft? What, what was the biggest reason this project was late? There's a lot of stuff there that can actually change where I think the current workflow for trying to work this out is, honestly, and you, you've, probably done it yourself, not, not that your team are, are imperfect, but you know, you probably have to just now and then like sit down and like read an entire like, uh, like you know, four Google Docs and three Basecamp posts or whatever to try and work out like what happened when I was away, yep. you know. It doesn't even matter to me. Yeah, 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 you know? yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of stuff had ha could have happened and a decision yeah. was made and we're good at the decision and yeah, the yeah. context actually is unnecessary. Yeah, yeah, totally, but, like, but sometimes you're just digging for the decision almost, right? Like, yeah. uh, and so like imagine a world where you can log in and say like the reason I'm actually logging into Basecamp today is because I need to work out are we on track for August 11th. Mm -hmm. Being able to get to that level of like here's the thing I actually want to know and like the words don't really matter, uh, that can be quite powerful. I have yet to see that like done well to be clear but I suspect it will happen. Yeah. Uh, so like but the nature of a PM tool will change from that point of view. I think there's other shit that we haven't, we don't necessarily, you know, we're not a consultancy but like I think identifying conflict resources and stuff like that like hey, Paul's across these seven things and he's actually booked to be here. Like that sort of stuff could be pretty useful too. Mm -hmm. So I think like in general the PM tool is definitely ripe for it but I think I'm, I'm a little personally allergic to the, like the tab to complete massive paragraphs of writing and judgment because I, I, I prefer if that actually comes from someone's brain, at least right now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah another one, maybe the final we'll, we'll cover today, we'll, we'll go back to some practical things for people to think about as takeaways, is reporting and reporting tools. Yeah, yeah. Right, so like, for example, we here at Intercom have spent the best part of a decade mm -hmm. uh, building deep reporting. Yeah. And, uh, at, you know, editing reports, creating reports, all, all the kind of typical things, mm -hmm. You know, from CRUD, from a CRUD point of view, like create, you know, create a new report, call it, like update yeah. it, change it, filter it, Deep. categorize it, facet it. Yeah. The more we build, and the more research we do with customers, the more we learn. There's more to build. It's like right? the never-ending story. Yeah, more configurability, uh, more yeah. customization, etc. Yeah. Now, though, you realize AI could probably do a lot of that. Yeah. And um, there's no need to build all of these things yeah. or use them if they've been built yeah. already. And we find ourselves in a position where we're kind of thinking like. We're still building reporting features, yeah. but also wondering like, yeah. should we also be building the need for our customers to never use them? Yeah. So instead, they have some kind of like, literally a, a field, yeah. and they type in the question like, you know, is LTV up or down, or you know, mm -hmm. is my customer support volume gone down, or what was mm -hmm. our busiest day this week? Or it's yeah. all chat-based UI. Yeah. Um, AI will clearly be good at that. Yeah. I think it will do things like uncover correlations in data mm -hmm. that humans never would purely because there's just so much data you yeah. know and like and it's so much more powerful than any one person like, yeah it's yeah. exactly yeah and i can just do so much more yeah 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 i think the role of humans might be less about like digging through the data and the analysis yeah and much more about judgment yeah and then beyond it's kind of like you know and yeah. like do the analysis apply yeah. human judgment yeah. then make decisions yeah. I think humans will move away from the analysis part, yeah. I will do that, yeah. but they'll apply the judgment to make the decisions. But, but you said, yeah. and I agree, that AI will do the judgment too. Yeah, yeah. Can you explain that a bit? Yeah, yeah, sure. Like I think, um, I'll get this wrong, but like there's an educational psychologist called Benjamin Bloom who like was trying to describe how, how you get to know something, an area of any sort. And he has this thing called Bloom's Taxonomy of Educational Objectives. And at the very, very, very low end is recall, right? Just, you know, you, can you list the 26 counties of Ireland type mm -hmm. of thing, right? Like, there's no depth to that. You're just like, oh, Roscommon, Monaghan, whatever. Right? 
and at the very, very, very high end is like synthesis. Can you create new stuff based on existing stuff, right? Yeah. So you go something like uh, recall, uh, recognition, uh, comprehension, analysis, and synthesis. I'm skipping one or two there, and we'll put we'll put a better diagram in the show notes. But um, but I think like a lot of people are, are only really comfortable with AI as like a, as a house pet. Like they they, yeah. they like it at the low end, right? It's good. Like in the same way that people are cool with like typo correction or whatever, right? But I think um. Yeah, we have to get more comfortable with AI as a peer, in a sense, right? Yeah. And I think AI will be able to apply judgment because, like, even if you take our own bot, Finn, like, a lot of what Finn does is, like, given this, answer that. So, like, uh, Rewind.ai is a customer of Finn. Uh, I'm a Rewind user. It's an awesome product. And I was asking, uh, Rewind does this thing where it wants to record every meeting, and I didn't want to do that, so I was trying to disable this pop-up. And I went to Rewind's help site, and I said, how do I disable the pop-up? And Finn said, oh, here's how you do it. And it linked up an article where it never, the article never directly said to disable this pop-up, here's how you do it. Yeah. What the article said was something along the lines of, oh, if you want to turn on this feature, you go here to do it. By the way, when you do it, it won't be always on. It's going to pop up every time. And Finn inferred that, having read that article, it was like, ah, so if that's the thing and that's the preference for it, it must be on this screen. And Finn like, basically gave me a perfect answer. That, to me, is like a, a very, and I'm using that just because not to promote film, but just because it's a very live in the wild, like the yeah. shit is here today type example of like deduction or judgment and, and suggestion. Like it, it, it was confident enough to tell me that was the answer, um, which I just thought was a, in a, a simple, great example where like no, one, like no one in Rewind had to actually write that answer out mm-hmm. and worked it out. In the case of, say, reporting, imagine we go from like, you know, show me which CS reps get the highest scores, right? I think... That's a pretty simple ask, right? It's like, yep. you know, uh, then you could say, like, show me what topics correlate with the highest scores. That's probably pretty simple. And you could say, like, uh, show me which CS reps tend to perform the lowest on, on, on which topics. And maybe that could be, like, where you have better, better training courses or whatever. And then you could say, like, prioritize that list and suggest the type of training they should do. And then you could say, mail those people and tell them to go on that training, right? All of that is, like, is like judgment in a sense. Mm-hmm. And, and I think the, uh, like, it's not clear to me, like, where the AI stops in its capability here. What is clear to me is that a lot of people are, uh, there's, a, there's a human comfort level in terms of like, you can go that far, but like, I need to be the person who clicks this. And it's, it's not too far off, like, you know, the old Dilbert cartoon of the pointy haired boss who just like likes to feel important, so like gets to be the person who presses the launch button or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. like, fundamentally, they're actually irrelevant in many of these scenarios, but they, their need to feel important still represents itself. Uh, and I think there's a lot of like a lot of our first pass uh, attempts at like using AI will be like that. They'll be like, well, hang on a second. Like, sure, all that low level shit can go away, but I still need to be here for the important stuff, you know. Yeah. So I, I, but I do think you're gonna see the, you know, uh, like the there's some like dark sort of futuristic cartoon where like, um, you know, there's, there's like a load of humans uh, on a factory floor and like they're all there to like you know do certain things and there's a button on a switch that they can click in case anything's ever gone wrong. And then the other side of the wall those things aren't wired up to anything. Mm-hmm. It's just there to make the humans feel important. Yeah, like yeah. Give, give them a sense that they're part of this process. You have as well. like um, traffic lights, pedestrian traffic lights yeah. on busy roads. The, yes. the button doesn't do anything. Yeah, it's it turns just, on it's, a light. Yeah, but it the gives you a sense of autonomy or, or I matter in this world, I happen to the world. <laughs> yeah. So like, I, I think there's a bit of that that we all kind of apply, which is just like, well, surely the, the AI won't be able to go that far. I understand all of the natural human uh, desire to cling on to the well surely's. But uh, in practice, I think we're going to just see we're going to see that bar just creep up and up and up. Um, yeah. Especially given that, like, you know, the reality of the is like, it it tends to be pretty right and it tends to be quite accessible and it probably works three six five twenty four seven. You know. Yeah. So like, uh, I I think you're going to see judgment like what people define as judgment just creep up and up and up. Yeah. I think the stuff there where it gets more funky is like, and, and there are valid reasons for this. AI is not perfect. Neither are humans. But AI is not perfect. And there are some decisions where you're like, right, let's not launch the email campaign without a human eyeballing it. Totally valid. So what you can imagine might happen there is all the work up to the last the step of the marathon might be done by AI. And then a human comes in and goes, yep, click. And yeah. like that sort of stuff I think makes sense. You know, yeah. like that's just logical. Yeah, let me ask you like an incredibly speculative question and then we'll quickly move on to give people yeah. some very pragmatic yeah. tips yeah. On, on questions to ask themselves, think mm-hmm. about how much this matters to them and how yeah, fast. Sure. So the perspective question is about how fast. So you know, we're talking about like um, from analysis to synthesis, mm-hmm. then there's judgment and making decisions. Mm-hmm. And humans, for sure, we all will feel the need to control it mm-hmm. and hit the red button. And so the yeah. decision making, yeah. do, I do, do, it, do we or don't we hit the red button, yeah. is left to us. How far away do you think we are from 
um, tools, really great software tools that are very ac that are excellent at judgment and are pushing yeah. us on like maybe they should just make the decision too. Yeah, yeah. I think it's going to go the same way as like you know like the ORBAC features we've built in here, kind of like role-based access controls. Yeah. I think it's going to be like that. I think we're going to have like literally be building preference dialogues into Intercom and other tools, where it basically says like you'll have you'll have a lot of settings that begin with allow the AI to dot mm -hmm. dot dot, because uh, I think there is like a a. Um, a spectrum as we spoke of at the start of like AI skepticism yeah and I think you kind of want you know if, if you're in any real sort of market you want to serve all ends of the market so like you could imagine like allow AI to like uh, reply request CSAT scores uh, allow, allow AI to ping my own support team under CSAT scores are dropping mm -hmm. allow AI to, you know like all the way down to like some probably slightly bigger things like allow AI to like you know what be extreme here like post a job opening on indeed.com because we're clearly understaffed yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know like yep. uh, like it's all of that like you know there's a spectrum of like what are the things humans would do there and like you know almost like an if this then that type of workflow do you play out so yeah the, that's basically how i would uh, how I, I think we're going to end up we have to so then to the case of like uh, your question was maybe how long before we see this i think it, you know there won't be some watershed moment where it's like it is here it'll just be like uh, what what might happen is we sit down next year and we're talking about like t if today we're talking about maybe the AI can see correlation in reporting the next conversation we might have might be like uh, maybe the AI should be s sending around suggested next steps yeah. you know like as in we're, we're, we're past discussing correlation that ship has sailed yeah. and I just think this conversation would be like the the um, like the continuous incremental creep of what we believe to be possible and what we're comfortable with. That makes sense to me too. And it's a similar pattern, you know, history is the best predictor of the future in a lot of these cases. Similar pattern with things like yeah, mobile, yeah. where, you yeah. know, like That's the first exactly iPhone right. was very, very basic. Yeah, yeah. And then every release, slowly yeah. maturity, yeah. more power, more, yeah. You're totally right, just as a side note, like, uh, when I was like a Web2 consultant, uh, the discussion at the time was like you'll never do X on in the cloud, right? right. And it was like you'd never have a word processor in the cloud. You'd never have like a video editing tool in the cloud. You'd never yeah. have blah. And like every single thing now, you can play Counter Strike in the cloud. Like it's like literally full on proper desktop gaming in the cloud, mm -hmm. and it's all done through a browser. And then similarly, you'll never do X on a phone. Like yeah, phone's good and all that, but like you're not really gonna whatever the thing in there was, you've done it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, 100%. you're not gonna find a date. You're not gonna apply for a mortgage. You're not gonna buy a car. You're, yeah. It's like turns out you do. It turns yeah. out you do all of these things. So when people tell me you're never going to really do blah with AI I'm like mate I've been I've, you know I've done this rodeo many times and I'm telling you you probably will so absolutely uh, to give people like practical questions for them to think about how quick this might happen yeah. to them in their industry there's a couple of ones that that, that that we have that I know you've used a lot here to talk to our team and our product yeah. uh, org things like you know uh, how can this AI technology be applied to create new features or mm -hmm. how can they be applied to make existing features easier, yeah, yeah. better, more powerful? Yeah. Do you want to talk us through that? Like, Yeah, yeah. I mean, like the, the core point I always come back to with all new like capabilities, whether, like, whether it's AI or like, you know, chatbots or messaging or anything new that's ever come along. It's like, what is a product? The product is like a, usually a platform of features that let a user get a certain job done or a certain set of jobs done and the questions you ask yourself as like a product manager as a product leader is like uh, given the technologies available uh, what is the best way that our users can get this done right um, and the, the idea there is like it's kind of the core jobs to be done idea right which is kind of fixated in this jobs don't change technologies change right. solutions change but the job is the same right and I think generally with these things what you're trying to do is either and make it so that more people can do the job. And a great example of that would be to say equals the spreadsheet company where like, I don't know Excel functions, mm -hmm. but I do know what I want out of them. Yep. Like I want to see the average growth rate of this startup over the last six months if you exclude organic traffic. And I don't know how to do that, but I, can, I know I can write it into a box and equals will work out what I mean and mm -hmm. it'll write up the formula for me. No, I don't, I don't actually know if the formula is right, but it seems to be most of the time. Yeah. Right? Or if it's wrong, it's so egregiously wrong that it's not a problem because I can correct it. Uh, but like that's a great example where uh, it's made it possible for more people to do the thing, right? And if your tool involves either arcane languages, complex query stuff, or like creativity, like as in I know I want to have a fancy black image, but I don't know how to design because mm -hmm. I'm not a designer. Like so, can you make can AI help this uh, help it so that more people can do this job? Yeah. Like an example might be like, hey, you know we want to let all of our English-speaking support staff be able to support all languages in Europe. Can AI help? 
probably. Yeah. Right. You know. So can AI improve the amount of people who can do the job? Like uh, increase it, right? And that's usually that's massive impact for your market size. Right? Yeah. It means more people can use your tool. Like more people can use equals than can use Excel. Which well, is just yeah, tools for, for yeah. narrow markets that require specialism yeah, yeah. become tools yeah, for exactly. general markets. Yeah, because, because you, you change one core thing, which is the amount of people who know what they want to do and the amount of people who can do it are now the same thing. Yeah. Right. So that, that's one huge thing. So can AI, all of this technology, can it make it so that more people can use your product ultimately? And chat UI is a huge part of that. Another one is can it make people uh, kind of like increase the power of their work? Like the, the, um, the anatomy, here, sorry, analogy geez, uh, here would be like, a crane, right? Mm -hmm. like, then if I jump into the, into a crane, I am now much stronger than I was before. I can move stuff at a high, far greater rate. Still me, still me doing the work, right? Yeah. But like now I'm lifting heavy, heavy stuff, right? Yeah. Heavier than I was capable of. Uh, and so similarly, like, if, uh, if a human can summarize one conversation at a time, can AI summarize one million conversations at a time or whatever, right? Like that, that type of technology. Uh, or like, you know, you referenced uh, looking at correlation across all data sets. Mm -hmm. like, a human can do that one by one. Uh, AI does not need to like act one by one. Yeah. Um, so there's that type of thing, which is just increase the capability of the human. The crane's a great example yeah. because um, you know when you're saying like you know one guy, you in this case, gets yeah. in the crane, lifts yeah. Yeah. The, the 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 volume of thing that yeah. eighty people would have had to like manually. Yes. Exactly. Right. It's any. I, I think you can apply that very mm -hmm. clearly to. Hey, what are things that lots of people are required to do yeah. where AI could make it so that one person yeah. overseeing it do yeah, yeah, or totally. do it by itself. Absolutely. And like um, Finn snippets in Intercom is like when one person answers a question properly, Finn will say, hey, is that the right answer? Because if it is, I'll take it from here. Yeah. And that's one person effectively doing the work of all future people for the future. You know, yeah. it, it is a, a type of crane, right? And then the third category, I think that like you have to look out for and it's, it's the one like Nearly ironically, it's the one that people tend to overlook. It's just like, there are things we can just get rid of entirely. Like, as in, things where, like, it's not even a dude in a crane anymore. Mm -hmm. you, you know, like, it's like, we, we've actually just taken away the need for that in its entirety. Yeah. And if you recall, say, the, the advertising example I talked to earlier, the ad platform, or whatever, where it's like, Johnny logs in every day to look at all the various charts and tables and, like, you know, like, there's definitely an argument where you actually just don't need that done at all. Like, yeah. that's just, you You just assume from this point onwards, in the same way you assume the like electricity works in your building, you assume the ads are optimized, you know? Or if they're not optimized, they're getting optimized, you mm -hmm. know, like, like uh, and there's nothing you need to do about it. So, like, there's definitely a third category there as well. So, yeah, the, just to zoom back, it's like, what are the new capabilities? Uh, like, what are new things that people can do? Uh, what are the things that, like, the 10x human capability? Uh, what are the things where you can um, expand the addressable market? And then lastly, what are the things where you can just remove entire just chunks of work, right? And like all of that is, um, is, is like generally how I think you should be thinking about this, which again comes back to this idea of this is why I'm not an AI skeptic. I just, I, I see too many opportunities, even in a, in a pretty prescribed domain like customer support, it's just so clear, like all of the ways in which like we, we could use 10 times the amount of like AI and ML people uh, to go after so many, to so many opportunities in the space. And that's like every time I get pinged by, uh, you know, we're doing AI for customer support, type startup, I, I'm, I'm like quite frustrated because I'm like, that's a brilliant idea. Uh, like we have, we either have or haven't thought of it, but like there's so many brilliant ideas, you know, like, yeah. and like that's just in one little domain, you know. Yeah, that's great. That's really, really good. I think practical advice. Um, these are good questions. I think all companies, so whether you're a startup incumbent, we've yeah. talked a lot today about uh, how startups should think about entering categories, yeah. uh, how I can, AI can disrupt that category or not, as the case may be. And on the incumbent side, um, I worry more about those bigger companies because I'm subject to this myself at times yeah, where yeah. I'm like, hang on a minute, we're like domain experts. We've been here 10 years doing this. Mm -hmm. There's no possible way yeah. AI could ever know the things we know. Totally. Yeah. Right? Nonsense. Of course, yeah, yeah. It, it can and will. Yeah, the kids don't know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. And the older you get and the longer in the yeah, teacher, yeah, totally. the, the stronger yeah. the feeling gets. Yeah. Um, so maybe we'll leave it there for today. Um, any kind of last pressing advice for the startups or incumbents or even investors, which we haven't covered today? We've covered a the, the, the gist of how I think about the space. I would say, um, like, it's a good time to reread The Innovator's Dilemma and to remind yourself the true nature of disruption. Like it has, to be a, it has to be a new attack vector that the incumbent businesses can't easily take. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of people are gonna say that they're gonna disrupt industries with AI. And I think if you're er, ever tempted to say those words at all, just do yourself a favor and even just read one of the six page or Harvard Business Review papers on it or whatever. Really 
re refresh exactly what it means to be properly disruptive, whether it's low end disruptive, or whether it's like new use case disruptive or new market disruptive. But like really just make sure that you know what you're saying. Because I think there's a lot of businesses that will build a really cool piece of product, but it'll ultimately end up being unpaid R&D for the much bigger company. Because they're gonna look down and go like, that's clearly the right thing. We should do that. Mm -hmm. And that will be it, right? Like you might have a cool new way of doing some specific task in accounting, in surveys, in time tracking, in like whatever, expense tracking. And you might have a really cool little feature that's dripping in AI. And it might get you like, honestly, you might be product hunt feature of the, of the day. Like, you know, you might have a sexy landing page. I might even tweet about it and say, check out this dope shit, right? Like it could be stunning. Question is, is it enough of an attack angle to be truly disruptive? Or will some principal engineer and principal designer sit down in mega big corp and be like, we should probably copy that. And yeah. If they copy it, it might take them a year, but in that year, you're unlikely to have built out a fully mature platform. And that's the, that's the challenge. And maybe that's okay. Maybe, maybe you're okay being like, hey, we're gonna go after the low end of the market. We don't have to actually compete with mega corp. That's fine, but just make sure you're making all of those decisions together. And don't just be like, we're gonna kill Salesforce because we have an AI based lead scoring algorithm or something like that. Salesforce are gonna work one out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's great, Des. Uh, let's see if there for today, and I'll see you maybe in 12 months so we can figure out what's next what's for AI next, and exactly. product strategy. Cool, cool. Thanks, Paul. All right, Cheers. you too. Cheers. Cheers.